The police say the injured include a military officer. But right now, the police is holding a briefing at Idria on the disturbances. We're going live to the grounds. We have already informed you about the arrests of two suspects, namely Ibrahim Isaka alias Anyas and Fuseni al Hassan, currently in police custody and are being prepared for court, hopefully tomorrow or tomorrow next. We will stop at nothing to arrest any other persons who is involved in this matter. Now on today's protest and unfortunate deaths and injuries, the command has commenced investigations to establish the circumstances surrounding the clashes leading to the death of two and injury of four other persons. Some media houses have given a high figure or of casualties without cross-checking from credible sources, such as the medical officers or the police. Please, let us be circumspect and report what is factual. The deceased have been identified as Nasiru Yusuf and Mutala Suraj. The identity of the injured persons are not uh, yet known. We are still working hard to get their names. Subsequently, our investigators will give their names to us to continue with our investigation. You all know that the protest followed the burial of the late Kaka, which is unfortunate. May his soul rest in peace and even as we work hard to give him justice. The military was invited to come and support the police to patrol the community yesterday so that the community will be safer and no criminal incidents are recorded. They arrived in town here at Ejura around 9 p.m. yesterday. While police SWAT and FPU teams were helping local police to arrest people whose names had come up as suspects in the murder of Kaka. So when the need for reinforcement arose today, our counterparts from the military were already around to support. As I said, the circumstances leading to the casualties are being investigated. We have all observed that the security situation now is calm. Security has been reinforced to ensure total stability. We therefore appeal to all to remain calm. Crime is crime and has no political color. So we are sure you here and the good people of Idra, the relatives of the deceased person, that whoever has been arrested and is found culpable will make sure that person face the full rigors of the law. We therefore appeal to the media to be circumspect and report factual information as much as possible. Give the police information you chance on so that we will all help with speedy investigation. On behalf of the command, I also say thank you to Nananom, the elders of the Zongo community, and the youth leaders for tremendous work. We know they've had a series of meetings today just to ensure that uh, calm is restored in the Edra uh, township. And as you can attest to that, since 3 p.m. as of now, we've not had any uh, incidents whatsoever. So we would want to just use this medium to uh, thank everybody, especially the opinion leaders. No, no, thank you. How will you rest today, today's uh, operation? Because many believe the use of force was was not clean of as you have been saying. Um, How will you respond to that? Yes, um, as I indicated in the uh, the speech, I told you that the command has already begun investigation into the matter. So whatever we unravel. Uh, from this investigation, we'll let the public know. 
of it. Is that an independent okay. investigation or the police own investigation? Definitely investigation is investigation. We are starting from here. So if there's the need for us to have independent investigators to take up the matter, I assure the general public and all of you here that that will be done. Well, the police, the, where will the team be living? How is the operation going forward? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you where they are living. We are going to be here until total calm is restored. I'm sure when total calm is restored, uh, we ourselves will know that no. We can now withdraw our men to base. The, the police in its um, earlier press statement stated that um, firearms, the youth were holding firearms. Were the police uh, uh, able to retrieve any firearms? So far, from the men on the ground, uh, no firearm has been ret uh, retrieved. But I'm sure uh, as investigation continues, whoever was holding a firearm will try to get the person fish him out and make sure that. He faces the full cost. If you are holding a firearm, you should hold it with authority. You can't just uh, wield the firearm and then fire indiscriminately. So we are going to investigate that, that aspect as well. Has an arrest been made? So far, uh, we've not made any arrests. Aside the two? Aside the two, yes. Today, uh, during the clashes, we have not had any uh, persons. We are. But, you know, when it comes to police investigations, sometimes when you go to the... Uh, the grounds, and you see how volatile the situation is. You don't go and then start arresting. Sometimes it degenerates into a more chaotic situation. So we uh, put our detectives out there to look out for those who actually perpetrated uh, the various uh, uh, crimes, and then we pick them, and then subsequently uh, we process them to court. I'm sure it's also part of our investigative uh, machinery, which we are going to ensure that it's done. Has any of your men? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, one military lieutenant uh, was injured uh, in the course of uh, his duties. Okay. So he's How among the four? He he's How among the... According to the men on the ground, he was hit uh, with a stone. Okay. How is he doing that? I'm, I'm, I'm told he's uh, responding to treatment. Can we know his identity? I'm told he's a lieutenant. I don't know his name at the moment. So when we leave here, I'll get the name and can, I'll let you know. So does the first press release from the police still stand, despite... This is an update, exactly, this is an update of uh, whatever we had issued since morning. You know, we have come out with two statements, the early morning one and the afternoon, and this is the latest update on the happenings here in the Can we be updated on uh, which side the uh, gunshots that you said in your press release came from on the ground? We are investigating that, so I wouldn't know where, you know, the military were armed, the police were armed, and some of the uh, youth in the community were also armed, so we don't know where the uh, firing is coming from. So, Hosmotem will determine, otherwise, investigation will also uh, reveal whoever uh, fired uh, at who. So, I'm let us allow them. Because, um, yes. On the ground, when we were filming live, we did not see. Anybody holding a firearm? This is an allegation. Uh, I want to know which part of this, 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 this is the allegation. Came from. We are investigating every aspect of uh, this incident. So let us allow the investigators to continue with the investigation. We are not going to shield anybody. We are not going to hide anything. Whatever the outcome is, we will let it be known to the general public. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so that's the Ashanti Region Police Command giving their side or telling their side of the story, events that unfolded at a giraffe. But let's get on to the ground now. What we know, two people have died while four others are battling for their lives after some protesting youth of a giraffe to sustained gunshot injuries from the military and police on Tuesday. It follows protests sparked by the death of a 45-year-old Ibrahim Mohammed, a.k.a. Kaka, said to be a member of the Fix the Country movement in the town. The youth have stormed the police station Tuesday morning to inquire about the extent of investigations regarding the murder of their colleague, stressing that they want the police to leave no stone unturned in bringing the perpetrators to book. The deceased, who is said to be critical of government, was allegedly attacked Saturday dawn. He was said to have been repeatedly struck in the head with objects until he lost consciousness and died at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital Monday. Erasmus Cesaridonko was in Ejra and he is still in Ejra, but he sent in this report earlier.
So one person has been shot and you can see him in your shot there. One person has been shot and the military contingent and the police are in here firing shots. Right, so medical superintendent of Ijira Government Hospital, Dr. Mesa Manye, confirmed their two deaths. We confirmed the two dead. Yeah, we've confirmed already. One was brought in dead, the other one died within 10 minutes after arrival, after active resuscitation. Because where the bullet hit was so much, hit the chest directly. And there is bleeding into the chest. That is uh, hemothorax. Are they injured? Can you tell us about the injuries? Yeah, the injuries were so bad. He had a femur fracture. Multiple femur fractures. What I mean, a femur, that the thigh. The right thigh got fractured. In addition to maybe the lower tibia. Tibia and, fem and fibula, that's the uh, right legs. They all got fractured. You can see a lot of swelling there. That is a lot of hematoma collection, losing a lot of blood, sweating profusely. You also entering into shock. But we are actively managing. And with blood transfusion, we hope it should be you know, stable. All right, so this is what we know about the dead and injured. As we know, there are two persons who have been killed and four injured. But who are these? Let's uh, I'll bring you that in a bit. So these are the details as given by the doctor that you heard from a short while ago. So the first person sustained uh, severe injuries. He sustained injuries on the thigh and had his femur bone completely fractured. He also mo suffered multiple deep lacerations on the thigh with bleeding into the thigh muscles. Now the second person had an injury on the right side abdomen affecting the right hip bone. Both third and fourth person also sustained injuries on the thigh. Now, details of the person killed. We have Abdul Nasser Yusuf. He is 25 years old. He was shot on the left shoulder into the chest. He suffered internal bleeding in the chest and died before arrival. And then we also have Muntala Mohammed, and uh, he's 26 years. He was shot 
at the back through to the chest. He experienced severe chest injury with internal bleeding and died 10 minutes after arrival. So these are the details as we have so far, and it has to do with the violent disturbances that occurred at Ejira, Sechitumasi, in the Ashanti region. <laughs> Economic Fighters League and uh, Fix the Country Movement have petitioned the Inspector General of Police to investigate the violence which resulted in the death of the two people. These two groups are also asking for a meeting with the IGP on Friday, July 2, or at its earliest convenience to discuss issues surrounding the death of a fixed country member who died after he was beaten by a mob. Joseph Sego Pine and Yi Ayi presented the petition. We are really, really peeved. A reason why we are sending, uh, we brought this petition to IGP and to request to meet him, hopefully Friday. <laughs> Absolutely needless. needless, rubbish, reckless. reckless. I mean, this was clear murder, clear murder, slaughter. These people were unarmed. These people were only showing grief. They were burying caca today. And the best you could do was what? Send an armed force there, and they didn't shoot in the crowd, as we are told. One was actually down at shooting range. How do you disperse a crowd by um, going down, Charlie? Yeah. This, 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 this is really, really bad. Very, very bad. Now, uh, Jurassic Church Dumasi MP Brian Mohammed has described as falsehood claims by the police that the youth of the area charged on the security agencies during the protests in Nigeria. Two people have died with four others injured. The Ashanti region police in a statement said the youth blocked roads and subsequently charged on the security operatives with machetes, stones, clubs, and firearms. Uh, Mr. Brahma says the claim is an afterthought and an attempt by the police to cover up their misconduct. He says the military personnel deliberately wanted to kill his constituents. The only means you can use to disperse them. What are the water cannons doing? That we use our tax payers' money to buy. What are they doing? We have, as a, I mean, as, as, as professional policemen and military men, you have been trained to handle riots and how to, conduct, uh, to control riots. Uh, for, my, for my information, I'm not in the job, but for my information, they were only burning lorry ties and nobody harmed anybody. They say, they say that you actually charged on them. The police say that you charged on them. This is only an afterthought, and they are only trying to, 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 to me, they acted unprofessionally, and they must accept that. The information I have is that uh, the soldiers deliberately, I have a picture here of a soldier firing into the crowd. He, he deliberately, if, if, if you are going to fire to disperse the crowd, you will fire into the air. Look at the soldier. Look at his position. I want your camera to capture it very well. Look at his position. He just squatted. He squatted and aimed into the crowd and fired not only one bullet. He fired several rounds of ammunition. That is how come two people died and about four people are lying in the hospital right now. So you say that the police... They acted unprofessionally. That statement is a false... Pro uh, they, they should agree that they acted unprofessionally. And next time they should... If they are going to... I mean, I, 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 so my brothers and sisters of the Inky Fraternity, do you believe this story? Ranking member on Parliament's Defence and Interior Committee, James Agaga, is demanding a parliamentary probe. Needless to use live ammunition. I saw in those um, videos uh, crowd control vehicles such as the water cannons. And so why they didn't use the water cannons to, disp to disperse the crowd, but chose to fire directly into the crowd, clearly uh, makes me very confused. And so there has to be an inquiry. And unlike the Techiman incident, which for now hasn't yielded anything by way of investigation and uh, um, uh, finding people culpable, we hope that this time around, the investigations will result in the um, punishment of the officers involved.
but 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 the bottom line is the attempt to suppress the fundamental rights of the people to demonstrate that is what has resulted in this massacre a think. member for ejura has written a statement which would be taken on the floor the statement has been um, admitted my position is that once that statement is before the floor we would make contributions to the statement Majority Chief with Frank Hano Dompre says it is out of place to blame the state for the deaths. So when these things happen, it, it appears very backward on our forward march as a democracy. So I, I, I want to condemn the killings. And killings anywhere should be condemned by all well-meaning Ghanaians. What I don't agree with is for anybody to create the impression that the states is oppressing the exercise of rights. And I put this in context, because if we begin to speak and make this narration, we will not see our way clear. Uh, I mean, in, institutions of state are replete with individuals, and these individuals are human like us. So people who serve in the Ghana Police Service, the Army, other security services, are human like us. So if under certain circumstances uh, we have these personalities going beyond boundaries, and some, for want of a better expression, excessive in the enforcement of the law, then we have to depart and identify all these people but not to lump them together and say that the state is oppressing individuals. That I don't agree. We should be encouraging state institutions that the police, the army, the national security to conduct a thorough investigation. And that the perpetrators should be brought to book. We cannot put a bad name on the Ghana Police Service because some individuals have engaged in some excesses. That would be most unfortunate. And I think that we, it is important we distinguish and distill these elements in the Ghana police service, other police services who are doing a good job, and let them face the rigors of the law.